So why do wind companies install these little towers? You and I have an insatiable appetite for electricity. Come with me and we'll look at the issues relative to wind farms and the communities that they serve. This is The Wind Farm Guy. Hi, this is Dennis Stout, and thank you for joining me for this episode of The Wind Farm Guy. If you spent any time around a wind farm at all, you've probably seen one of these small towers and looks sort of like a cell tower. Well, these are met masts or met towers because they have instrumentation that takes meteorological measurements. Essentially, they're weather stations that can measure and record the wind speed and direction, temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, and other data. Each met mast has booms up at certain levels with anemometers and weather vanes on them. The booms are typically perpendicular to the dominant wind so that the wind can hit the instruments unobstructed by the tower itself. When the wind blows at different speeds at different elevations, it's called wind shear. Sometimes these booms include instruments to document that wind shear and the upward and down movement of the wind. The vast majority of met masts installed in the U.S. in the last two decades are 60 meters tall, like this one, and for good reason. 60 meters is just under 200 feet. The FAA requires anything 200 foot tall or taller to have flashing lights, which are expensive. So wind companies just saved the money and kept the met mass at 60 meters, then mathematically determine what the wind was at other elevations and other locations in the project. However, the wind turbine hubs are higher. They're at 80 meters, 100 meters. Now developers are working on projects with them as tall as 160 meter hubs. These taller turbines are forcing met masts to be taller. When you have 60 meter met data, it's one thing to determine what's happening at 80 meters, just 20 meters away. It's a whole different matter to determine the wind at 160 meters, which is 100 meters different. To compensate, hub height met masts are being used to make the uh, extrapolated numbers more credible. So, what is the purpose of all this data? Well, most people think that it is to see if it's windy enough for a wind farm. Well, wind companies already have wind data for the project. They know it's windy there, and they wouldn't be there at all if they, wouldn't, if they didn't know that. Certainly, the data will confirm information already known, and there can be some surprises sometimes. Nevertheless, the data can be used to optimize the project layout. That's definitely one reason, but that's not the only purpose. A met mast is quantifying the wind so that discussions with investors will be more productive. Investors want to know that they are making a good investment. A common report is the 12 by 24, which quantifies the wind for every hour of the day for every month. You know, I'd much rather present an investor with a report like that than to say, I'm sure it's windy out there. No, real numbers are by far the better idea. It has been said that data is everything, and wind data is no different. Met masks, like this one, need to be up at least a year to have the data for the 12 by 24. But because there are windy years and some not so windy years, it's better to have at least a couple years of data. Yes, on-site MET data is a powerful tool. The bottom line is this. The MET data should be indicative of the wind in the project as a whole over time. So the longer it's installed, the more accurate the data will be. Also, you wouldn't want the numbers to the investors to be inflated, so they're typically not placed in the windiest spot in the project. That would exaggerate the numbers, and those inflated early numbers would, would result in less than stellar actual operating numbers. If you like what I've said today, be sure and click like and subscribe below. If you have thoughts or want me to address a particular topic relative to wind farms, please also leave me a comment. Met data is powerful in the wind industry and is a must. New technologies are emerging to help. There are sodar units which shoot sound up into the sky and is reflected back to sensors in the unit. These are capable of capturing the wind data at all elevations rather than just where that boom might be. Another technology is LiDAR, which is similar but shoots light up and is reflected back to light sensors.
<laughs> the beauty of these is they can easily be relocated to expand the coverage of the instruments. These two new, new technologies are great additions for the project, but the tried and true measure is still the Met Mast. This is Dennis Stout, and I'm the Wind Farm Guy. Thank you for watching. Working together, we can make good energy decisions and save our planet. I am the Wind Farm Guy.